Tara Jacobson, Marketing Art Place. So today we're going to start the series. I'm going to be doing a series of how to do your Etsy SEO. And it's going to be... So anytime you see a beginner series or something like that, you think, oh my gosh, I already know everything. But what I'm going to try to do is to break down each piece of the SEO process, talk about what's going on now, what's happening. And so this one may be, this one's about what SEO is. So this may be a little bit beginner for some people, but I'm telling you, if you're thinking about starting an Etsy business, if you're um, one of those people that email me and say, I've been in business for six months and my Etsy shop never took off, one of the things that you can really look at is doing SEO, which is search engine optimization. And I'm going to try to make sure not to use too many acronyms or funny words. And if I use funny words, I'm going to make sure to explain them. And I'm saying that because I'm going to start with what an algorithm is. So search, when somebody goes to the Etsy store, goes to the Etsy, you know, platform, they are looking for something. And um, because there are, you know, millions, billions of items for sale on Etsy, the way for them to find them is to do a search. And when you hear people talk about what an algorithm is, what that is, is behind the scenes, when you're doing a search, the computers have a format for how they're going to do the search. And Etsy search relies on different things. Nobody knows exactly what it is, but it relies on different things like how long the shop has been in business, how many good reviews they have, have they had any complaints, is there, um, are the titles and tags of their shop, um, of their product a good fit for what that person is searching for, how long has it been since they last sold anything in their store, how long has it been since they last sold something exactly like that item. So there's all these different things that happen. This happens in um, Google too, right? That's how Google works. So if you're used to Google, you can kind of know what Etsy does, but the thing about Etsy search is that it's not as smart as Google search. So if you know anything about Google search, it knows that a cardinal is a red bird, is a religious figure in the Roman Catholic Church, and is a type of baseball team right so it knows it can extrapolate it can figure out um based on your history kind of what you might be looking for if you're um extremely religious and you look up things all the time about roman catholicism then it would show you catholic things first if you're a baseball fan and always looking up the scores it would show you the scores first but etsy search isn't as advanced as google search so what happens is you have to, as an Etsy seller, have the exact words that somebody is searching for in your titles or tags for them to be able to find your product in when they do a search. So we're going to do a couple of searches, right? And we're gonna, I'm going to show you how Etsy search works. So say we're doing a search for um, ephemera. Just ephemera is stuff that you use. I make these little junk journals and, and it's stuff. It's papers, it's lace, it could be anything. It's mostly paper ephemera, like these bingo cards, things like that. Um, so we see that there's 200,000 results for ephemera, right? So that's the very first thing that we need to know, that there are a lot of results for just the word ephemera. And when somebody is searching for something, so when you're searching for, say, a um, scented candle, right? Okay. Say you're searching for a scented candle. There are 94,000 results. Now, obviously, nobody is going to go through 90,000 results. And what is going to happen, this is how people do searches. They're going to start this, and then they're going to go, oh, 94,000 results. Okay. 
Um, I need to know, and they're going to maybe take a look at this. And these are Sherlock Studies, Fish Bend. So these guys rank really well for scented candles. But say I'm not interested in books or bookstores or things like that. All of a sudden, I'm going to go, wait a minute. I like vanilla scented candles. Vanilla scented candles, right? And then all of a sudden, instead of 94,000, there's five. 6,000 functionally, right? And then I'm going to start looking and I'm going to be like, oh, wait, soy. I heard that soy candles are better. And then I'm going to put vanilla soy scented candles. That's why you'll see really big, long search terms in your um, results. And look, most of them are, are soy because we only lost 2,000 there. All right. So how do these people come up for vanilla soy scented candles so this this result is going to be different for all different kinds of people if i had favorited shops it could be different if i had purchased from a shop before it could be different but this one says best seller so let's see why this one is a best seller so first off we want to see they have soy scented candle vanilla so all those words are in their title and we'll have a whole video about how to write your title. So that helped them show up in this search. If they didn't have those words in those, either the title or the tag, Etsy is not going to extrapolate and show other things. Now we're going to come down to the tags. So it's in this category, home and living, home decor, candles and candle holders, candles, container candles, and then they start with antique books, right? So book scented candle, so there's scented candle, that's what I searched for. There's soy, and there's, they only have vanilla up at the top, but you only need to have it once. So that means that they had all of those keywords in their titles or their tags. That's how you get found. So say we look for cardinal, right? And I'm looking for the baseball team. Redbird, 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 Redbirds, Redbirds, Redbirds. So if you were selling something from baseball, you would want to say baseball, right? So it may be a gift for a cardinal lover. And now all of a sudden we get to see all kinds of things for the cardinal baseballs. So, and this is funny because people always say, well, don't you want to rank for the biggest keyword? So for me, that would be ranking for, say, marketing on Google, right? Well, if I worked my fanny off and I got ranked for, for marketing on Google, that they're not looking for, like, nobody is just searching marketing to find something to help their business. They're looking for real estate marketing or they're looking for Etsy marketing or they're looking for Pinterest marketing. And if they're looking for Pinterest marketing, they might look, be looking for Pinterest marketing for Etsy sellers, right? So when I, when I think about doing my own SEO, I try to do it with an idea of finding my, you know, that, that at the very least, if only one person ever looks for this, they will be able to find the exact, same, exact thing that I'm selling. So I'm going to show you a listing I just put up. This is a marble-based vintage pen holder okay so and it's very beautiful so marble based vintage pen holder and then i go to what's on it so there's a scotty dog and then the category it's in that people might look for which is desk accessories and then it's checkered right it's cool some people like checkered black and white things i could probably even take out and i think that they do the um are those those aren't conjunctions what are those I don't know what they are. Um, and then it could, it's unique and rare because I got this at an antique auction. Um, it's good for the library office. And then I have just gift for, right? Um, so people will search for gift for, gift for mom, right? Christmas gifts for mom, okay? So we haven't gotten into what those things at the top are, but we're going to get into those in just a minute. Um, so gift for mom, there are a million results. So if you're trying to put gift for mom 
in your titles and tags and think that you're going to win that, you probably aren't. So you really want to figure out, you know, gift for, so we have a million, 89,000. So how about gift for new mom? So already we're down to 131,000 results. So that's 10, a tenth of what it was with just gift for mom. So you want to be thinking about those things. But now let's say we're, we're wanting to do something and I want to get a necklace for my daughter. So necklace. And see how these drop downs come? Necklace for men, necklace for women. All of those things are clues that you would want to put in your titles or tags if it applies to your product, really. Like, we don't want to trick it. We want to show up for results for people who absolutely want to see what we're selling. Excuse me. Okay, so I would say necklaces for women. Now, I'm... I. I have things that I could do, right? So initial necklace. So now once you get to necklaces for women, you could do that same thing, put a space after it so you could have personalized initial silver cross stone. So you're getting all kinds of, of, of ideas here. And then if you go over here, it's been said that the, that the really bright orange ones are the ones that are most searched. And then as it goes down, sometimes it goes down all the way to like a really light, almost a yellow, buttery yellow. So if yours matches initial necklace or name necklace, you'd want to do that. But say I want, um, I'm, I'm not looking for personalized or a name or a necklace, but dainty. Okay, so a dainty necklace or a long necklace. So these are all things when you're doing your titles and tags that you're going to be wanting to think about for for optimizing your listings now let's look over here for other things that they can do so people can do other kinds of searches and this one is a big one i have another video on this so uh this is do you offer free shipping so let's uncheck that so there's a million seven hundred ninety-one thousand, and then if somebody only wants the ones with free shipping, they can exclude everything without free shipping. Now I sell vintage, um, and so there it really is. Like if we do a search for uh, vintage pen holder, black, white. Okay, say somebody has a color theme for their office. There's only 53 results. So I'm going to show up on the first page, right? There I am. But that's because there aren't that many. So number one, it could be because I'm me and I'm showing up. But that's because I'm not competing with as many things. Now, if you're selling necklaces for women, then you may want to think about doing free shipping. You may also notice that less than half of the people have free shipping. So I don't think it's an absolute deal breaker, but if you're selling something that is lightweight and small, you may want to consider doing free shipping. Okay, now somebody could say, I only want it on sale. And then you're going to go, now we're down to 200,000. So you could consider sometimes putting things on sale. Okay, we're not going to get into that with our SEO, but those are options. Today, we're just talking about how search works. Okay, so now they can do it by how fast they search. Is it for, a oh, it's for a girl. So now we want to say, okay, for girls. So these all come, these guys um, come somewhat from our attributes. And I'll show you the back end of this in a little, you know, t tomorrow, the next day. Um, but this is what kind of stone is it? What kind of animal is it? What kind of style is it? What theme it is? Can it be personalized? Yes or no? So all those things, you could take a look down through those and see if any of those apply to your item. Is it handmade? Is it vintage? The pricing of it. So here's a big one. I'm not, this does, isn't part of SEO, but um, one thing that you may want to consider is instead of pricing something at, let's see what under $50 is. Does that get us $50 items or $49.95? 
So you want to think about who's best for your audience because we always want to get the highest price for our item. But if somebody like this person at 4845 is at that very top of it, I almost think I would put mine in 50 to 250. I would price it at 50 instead of 48 because somebody who's looking for under $50 may be looking for an affordable necklace where somebody looking 50 to 200 I mean, then you're the super affordable necklace in the 50s to 200s, right? So that's something to think about. They can sort them high to low. Can, can, do you accept Etsy gift cards? Can be gift wrapped. You, you have to select that in your listings and where it'll ship to. And it's showing United States for me because, you know, I'm in the United States. So say somebody was sending a gift to somebody in Canada, they might put Canada. So that is kind of how Etsy search works. Um, tomorrow we'll be talking about how to do your titles in Etsy search. So hopefully that helps. If you have any questions, please make sure to leave a comment below. Um, if you would like to be notified when the other videos come out in the search, make sure to hit subscribe and the little bell next to it to make sure you get those notifications. Hopefully that helps. Tara Jacobson, Marketing Artfully.